But Costco wholesale chain of stores has over 500 stores operating in 46 states in the U.S. You can pretty much find anything there at wholesale prices, from electronics to a fantastic meat department, and of course an impressive wine selection. Of the hundreds of wines to choose from, Costco also offers their own wines from around the world and marketed under their Kirkland label. Are the wines any good? We'll try to answer that question in this video. Hi, I'm Reggie Norito, here to help you learn more about wine one sip at a time. In this video, we're going to look at four wines from the Costco private label lineup. I randomly selected four wines from around the world. A Pinot Grigio from Italy, a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, a Pinot Noir from California, and lastly, a Red Blend from Bordeaux. Now, you know how much I love to drink wine. Let's do this. The first white wine is a Pinot Grigio. This wine is from the Grave region, which is located in the northeastern corner of Italy. My wife and I love Italian Pinot Grigio because the wines are simple, easy to drink, and in many cases, easy on the wallet. And this wine is no exception. It exhibits delicate aromas and flavors of lemons and green apples with a touch of minerality. The crisp acidity makes it a great partner with food, too. I really like it with chicken, fish, and salads of all kinds. It's kind of like squeezing a lemon on your food. It helps to bring out the flavors of what you're eating even more. As good as this wine is, the price is even better. At $5 a bottle, it's a lot of wine for the money. Now, I've had hundreds if not thousands of Italian Pinot Grigios in my life, and while it won't be hard to find similar priced Pinot Grigios, few will match the quality. You'll have to look at wines that cost $3 to $5 more to find that. I'd give this wine a thumbs up. The second wine is a tried and true favorite. This is Sauvignon Blanc from the Marlboro region of New Zealand. Marlboro is a region on the South Island of the small country and is where the vast majority of Sauvignon Blanc in the country has grown. The New Zealand style of Sauvignon Blanc is a bit different from, let's say, California or even France. The wines are really vibrant and aromatic. This wine here is a perfect example. It's imbued with generous quantities of crisp citrus and tropical fruit notes, and it also has that telltale aroma of pyrazines, a wine geek term used to describe green notes in a wine. In this wine's case, I smell jalapeno peppers. Now, don't think this wine is spicy hot because it isn't. It's delicious and has that mouth-watering character that draws you back for another sip. It retails for just under $7, which is an incredible value for a wine of this quality. Most New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is around $10 and up. A great wine any way you look at it. I'd give it an enthusiastic thumbs up. My third wine is a Pinot Noir from the Russian River Valley in Sonoma, California. Since the Sideways movie was released in 2004, this variety has seen a surge in popularity. I just started seeing this wine from Costco last year. In previous years, it came from Carneros. I don't know, maybe they were doing it sooner, but the 2020 vintage of this wine was a really good wine for the money. The 2021, which is the latest vintage that I have here, it's still a good wine, but it's tad overripe for me, so I prefer the 2020 vintage over the 21. Still, the wine exhibits classic aromas and flavors of raspberry and black cherry framed with some notes of vanilla and oak and even some black tea notes. The wine has moderate tannin, which makes this a perfect wine to pop and pour today. This wine will go really well with grilled chicken, pork, even filet mignon. Now, this wine is the most expensive wine being reviewed here at $12. There are certainly Pinots that are less expensive, but not many that have an AVA like the Russian River on it. AVA labeled wines tend to be more expensive, and a fine one at $12 a bottle is a bargain indeed. I'd give this wine a thumbs up. The final wine is new, or at least it is for me. I've never seen it at the Costco near my house. This is a Red Blend Bordeaux. On the back of the label, it says that it's a blend of 60% Cabernet Sauvignon and 40% Merlot, which is unusual with Bordeaux at this price point. I have been to Bordeaux a handful of times for a job in the past, and most of the red Bordeaux at this price point is usually Merlot-based with not much oak in it. This wine has been aged in French oak for 12 months. Now here's the kicker. The wine is only $7. Are you kidding me? In the glass, this wine is dark ruby in color. The aromas are a bit close at first, but they open up with about 15 minutes or so of air. Aromas and flavors of plum and blackberries frame this wine, along with secondaries of dried herbs, damp earth, and cedar. The tannin is medium-high, as is the acidity. I suspect this wine would go well with roast pork and grilled steak. It reminds me of red Bordeaux from younger vines planted further north where the soil is more clay than stone. 
Not a bad effort, but I think this is more of a food wine than it is a drink alone kind of wine. But man, at seven bucks. So there you have it. Now it is important to note that the prices I quoted on this video may not necessarily reflect the prices in your market and availability may vary as well. Also, it's important to note that these are my opinions only. Your opinions might vary once you try those wines. However, these four wines are just a sampling of their selections. Costco makes more wines than just these four. With that said, I was really impressed with these wines. They were good examples of the grape variety and their place of origin, and the prices are simply extraordinary. Now, if you like good everyday drinking wines at incredible prices, you can't go wrong with these wines. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, I hope you press the like icon. And if you'd like to see more videos just like this, I hope you press subscribe. Until next time, peace out.